Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. So in today's video, I'm going to be talking about all things Paraloid. Now, Paraloid is an excellent thing for curation and conservation, and I use it all the time on my fossils, and a few of you have been asking about how you make the solutions, or what actually is Paraloid B72. Now, this is how you buy it. So this is the form it comes, and you've literally just got all these kind of little plastic nugget things that you then dissolve in different solutions. So I usually always dissolve it in acetone because it's the quickest to dissolve in and it's just the most versatile for the type of preparation I do. But you can dissolve it in other things as well depending on what you're looking to get out of it. So, you know, the adhesives or consolidants, you might want to use something other than acetone because it doesn't evaporate so quickly. So if you can't join the pieces of your fossil together really fast, um, acetone might not be the best option for an adhesive but in terms of a varnish or you know to just give that gloss finish or just you know glue on little bits of fragments it is marvelous so I'm a real big Paraloid fan you guys have probably noticed and it is now time to make up some fresh solutions so I need to make up some more batches of my Paraloid because my jars are empty, um, so I'm going to show you how to take the old Paraloid out your jars so that you don't have to always keep getting a new jar every time you make the solution. And I find glass is the easiest, but you can get Paraloid or acetone resistant pa uh, plastics as well if you would prefer. But I just think glass, it never, you know, the solution never dissolves my glassware, so it's perfect. But um, to get out the old Paraloid, I let the acetone evaporate out, so I let it kind of completely empty itself and then you get like, I don't know if it'll show on camera, but it's almost like just the residue at the bottom, which is solid, you know, there. this is already pretty much a solid, there's nothing liquid left in this, and then I just use like a pointy tool because my hand can't wedge in there, and I literally just peel it out and it should, theoretically, come out in one piece. <laughs> but each time is different. So just like that, there we go. So that's the leftover Paraloid from that jar. And you can see it gets, it also takes with it like all the bits of rock that might've come off the specimens I was painting on. So it means the jar is pretty much clean, but I could now give this, you know, a bit more of a rinse if I wanted to, but I normally just peel out the old and in with the new. So that's that jar. So I'll do the other jar as well, just so, cause I, I think I'm gonna make up two solutions to show you guys today. And it's all about concentration. So if you just wanna varnish and give your fossil a little glossy kind of effect, you need such a dilute solution of Paraloid. So a bag like this goes a really, really long way. I mean, that much Paraloid will do a lot of fossils, but if you're looking for more of an adhesive or a consolidant, then it's a little bit more tricky because you can't just dissolve it in acetone, you have to suspend the Paraloid, um, so that's a little bit more tricky and also acetone isn't normally the best thing for that because it evaporates quite quickly, so if you're trying to join two large bits of rock together and you can't assemble them quite quickly, um, you're gonna have a few issues with that, but I'm gonna keep this video simple today and then depending on the response from you guys, I can go into more detail about other ways we can use Paraloid, but I'll keep it simple, we'll do the most common together. I could now give myself weird excess Paraloid earrings. I mean, if you're super creative, you could definitely do something out of these. Aw, oh, I feel like I'm doing an Edna Mode impression from The Incredibles, if you don't know, or not just that, who's that character from Star Wars as well? who wears the goggles. I feel like I'm just doing a cosplay of them right now. Okay, so to start making your Paraloid solution, you have to work out what are you trying to achieve. If you're just trying to achieve a nice gloss finish or a slight varnish, then follow what I do. So you take your empty jar, you don't need a lot of Paraloid. I kind of just rough it, but you can calculate it properly. So I do one part Paraloid, nine parts acetone, and I find that is just a really safe combination and it always just gets me the results I'm looking for. Because the acetone, when you're using the Paraloid and the lid is off, the acetone does evaporate. So as you kind of use the solution, as you go down your jar, it will become a thicker solution and so it kind of starts off as a very weak varnish and then you can use it for more you know adhesive purposes for small fragments so it just takes a while getting used to your paraloid um that's how i would kind of explain it so i'm just going to pour in some paraloid so i'd kind of go for just coating the base of the jar so this is quite a small jar anyway 
Um, so I've literally just put a layer right at the base there. Um, so you can see really not a lot of paraloid because you can always add more. It's not like um, you're gonna run out. You can literally just pour in more paraloid and it will dissolve the next day. So if you find the solution is too weak for what you want, just drop in a few more paraloid nuggets. So I'm gonna pop that there and I'm gonna take one of my acetones. So let me just open this. Like so. And you literally just pour it up to kind of where you think you'll use. like that and then I'm just going to pop the lid on that is that the wrong one? yeah try and make sure you get the right lid for the right pot just because it is going to evaporate so I'm just going to leave that there I'm just going to top it up a little bit more because it is just a little bit low the amount but that's what it currently looks like so it looks really nice in the acetone and it just it kind of looks like crystals crystals in water I really like it. Um, so let me just open this one. This was just so they could travel safely, so they've been taped. Um, dun, dun, dun. And the reason I have to make so much paraloid up is because I'm working on a load of specimens and I've got to create them all and I've got about a hundred or so little fragments of uh, uh, ammonites, brachiopods, other different fossils, which I will try and film for you guys as well, but it's a lot of fossils, so maybe not all of them. Um, so they all just need like a little bit of preparation just to preserve them because they were in the drill core, so they're just a little bit fragile because they're in the mud rock. But that will be a video maybe next week or the week after, so stay tuned for that. But that's why I'm making the solution because we've got mud rock fossils to preserve, so they all just need a little coat of um, acetone acetone paraloid going crazy I tell you so I'm just going to top this up a tiny bit more just like that and then put the lid on now this solution will need to now sit overnight so I'm just screwing the lid on nice and tight so this is what I kind of made so this is probably more of a I don't know, 15% concentration solution and they always say it should be under 10% for a varnish but I find maybe because I don't suspend the paraloid that this just makes a really nice solution for me to paint on my fossils and it never makes them too thick or too shiny it's just a nice layer on it because when you paint it on obviously the acetone evaporates and you're just left with the paraloid behind so it's cool stuff so I'm going to put this to one side now and we'll let that dissolve and then tomorrow we'll come back and we'll see what it looks like hopefully dissolved <laughs> so it's the next morning now and the paraloid has dissolved exactly as i expected it to so you can see here there's no more little nuggets at the bottom it's all one solution however i'm not sure if it'll show up on camera there is the density difference between the acetone and the paraloid so you might be able to see that at the bottom there's kind of like a thicker solution that's kind of accumulated which is obviously the paraloid and I find that right before I'm going to use the paraloid I don't mix it because that might create bubbles I just kind of take my jar and I just let the solution do the work and I just kind of rotate it and I find it just kind of moves the paraloid around a bit more and it just dilutes that solution otherwise you'll have a very weak solution of paraloid on the surface of your jar and then it will become more like an adhesive solution at the bottom of your jar which obviously if you know um, what you're working on and that works for you, great um, but if you want the whole thing to kind of be an equal concentration you have just got to wiggle it a little bit but you get used to using Paraloid and then I'm going to show you an example of how I use this stuff and for painting it on I tend to just use artist brushes so these are just kind of the rougher bristle ones and I find they just work the best and you can just pick up a pack of all different sizes and they're just really affordable options and they give you the variety you need to get in all the different shapes and sizes of different specimens 
Now, the specimen I'm working on today, it is an important one. So for those of you who don't follow me on Instagram, you may not know, but I've been working on a drilling project um, at BGS. And what we've been doing is we drill a 10 centimeter diameter core, and then it gets sawn in half. One half goes into the archive collection, and one half is the working half where scientific papers are written and published about the 700 meter worth of rock core. Um, so it's pretty cool. I will be doing a video about the the whole process of this project probably in a few weeks or months or so once I get all the footage um, but this is one of the specimens that came out the core and it's amazing to find ammonites that actually have their center because you only get one shot you know this drill goes down then it gets sawn in half so you're in half of the core and so to get an ammonite smack bang in that is quite remarkable so this is a really lovely specimen and if you look closely there's you've got this lovely large iridescent one here and then you've also got two more fossilized on top so it's a really nice piece this one but before i can paint it with paraloid i do just have to prep it very ever so slightly just with a nice sharp scalpel um just like this just to flick off the little bits of mud that are in the way of the beautiful shell and then once I've done that I'll show you how I paint on the paraloid. So now that this one is prepped it only needed a real tiny amount of prep just to you know flake some of the flaky bits of mud off the rest of it as long as it's identifiable it's perfect. So now I'm just going to put a really thin layer of the paraloid on the surface. You don't want it to do any more than that so you, you can see I'm just painting it on and it will evaporate as I put it on and we just want it to leave behind a very slight kind of varnish. This is the final result, so you can see I've just put a very thin coat of paraloid all over this specimen just to help preserve it as it is in a mud rock and it also has been drilled which means it's just naturally weaker anyway. So I've also put the paraloid down the edges of the sample as well just to ensure it's a little bit more protected. But alongside its, you know, conservation properties, paraloid also helps to bring out the colours in the shell. And I think it just really helps you look at what you're looking at. So yeah, that's just a quick little video all about paraloid. If you want a more in-depth one, I'll happily do the research and create that for you guys. But I just love how versatile paraloid is and you don't need to be an expert to use it. Just make sure you're in a well-ventilated space. And as you saw, it's very easy to just make in an old jam jar overnight and it can really help your specimens, help preserve them for the future, but also help, you know, make them look a little bit more glossy. And I also think it brings out the surface as well so you can see more in your specimen and that's why water is a really good thing to use you know if you're trying to look at a rock surface making it wet you know it just can bring out more things than when it's matte so um, that's why paraloid is excellent and it's completely reversible so as you saw today in the actual you know scientific world we do use this stuff so it's really recommended by you know all the experts out there so i hope you enjoyed today's video let me know any questions down below or any bits of guidance i am far from an expert when it comes to curating fossils or paraloid itself i just thought a little guidance video may be useful for some of you so i do hope you found this video useful but as usual i'll link on my social media down below if you'd like to follow me on there for even more fossil stuff um, but look after yourselves and hopefully i'll see you next week Thanks for watching.